Self-defense tip number five. Now, if you notice on that last scenario, when I had the opponent grabbing me here, I couldn't do anything with my body, but that freed this entire hand. Again, I couldn't reach the eyes as well as I would have liked to, but the slap was there. This is why we've broken up the tools into eight variables. So you're going to see a combination of the slap, but then what I did from the slap is it just directed the energy of his face onto the headbutt. So with one motion, we covered two tools. That's nice. Okay, Carlos. So he was grabbing me here. It was just simply one, boom, two. Okay, so to do that again, see, sometimes when you slap, because of the power of your slap, you won't get the head, but boom, because he's way over there already. So if he comes back into the play, if he st it is stuck on when you do slap, it's boom, boom, and then you've got it. So we're combining the slap with the grab. All right, let's try it. Hey, Jimbo here. Got an awesome free giveaway for the first 200 guys, the TRS Buccaneer. Extra tough, shockingly easy to swing machete that delivers more devastating chopping power than an ax. This is 20 inches of mind-boggling hacking power inspired by the classic 1917 US Navy Cutlass. And right now, with your permission, I will rush you this amazing machete for free. Just pay shipping and handling, and it's on its way to your front door. There are only 200 available for this free offer. So get to the link in the description now if you want one. Self-defense tip number four. Our next aspect will be the forearm drag. Forearm drag will set this cat up to where we want to bring him in and lower his level. Whether he's coming up here and putting his hands on me, or he grab, or grab, whether he's grabbing me, I grab him back. My forearm drag, all I'm doing taking my forearm bone, digging it to his, lowering my center of gravity, and pushing him forward. It's not about strength, it's just about leverage. Bringing him down to my size. If I have a big man up here, and I wanna bring him down, I wanna bring, I'm gonna bring him down, so I can try to equal that playing field. Come over here. Same thing, same side, different side, different angle. My forearm is going into his forearm. I'm wrenching his forearm. And I'm just gonna bring him down. Let him be at my level. Once he's at my level, then I can start my ghetto boxing. Whatever it may be. So if I'm here, bam, bam, I can throw that hook and elbow. I can bring in the combinations attack. I can bring in the, the Reese of head fighting just to bring him down to my level. You, I mean, you're not going to really grab a fool and then do this. This is not, not that point. This is if somebody's being aggressive towards you, grabbing you, and then bringing them down. It's his aggression that's going to make him fall, not your aggression. So you have to let him be the aggressor with this forearm drag. And make sure you put that forearm in there and really rake it. Self-defense tip number three. Hey crew, Mark Hatmaker here and my friend and associate compadre, Dan Marks. Hey Dan, uh, is, if I haven't said it before and I'm going to say it again, I'll say it until the day I die. I love old school boxing, early days, old school wrestling, early days, and old school frontier rough and tumble combat. The stuff that was truly about ripping and killing and tearing and winning. Um, and not everything has to be that way, but one of the things, the beauties of it, you find unusual ways to strike, unusual ways to have some combinations. So let's steal an idea from a fighter named Panama Brown from the early uh, 20th century. And something he had, he didn't really call it the up fist, but close diagnosis re reveals this is a sneaky little weapon that's in there. Is it strictly legal for boxing? No longer, not anymore. You can get away with it in MMA if you want. Street, oh hell yeah, it's all cards are on the table for that one. Uh, basically, what we've got here is he had a good range on him, and he would throw a jab, particularly he's throwing a low jab. So I'm facing Dan right here, and we'll keep your hands down so we can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, he threw it with so-called bad form. If you get away with it, nothing's bad form, right? And which means he was punching downhill. Like, if I'm going to throw a jab at Dan's emblem right here, right at the breastbone, I should always have my arm in line with the shoulders. I'm wanting to hit in here. I'm going to turn over with it and face in. I can throw a navy jab, what have you, but it's going to be straight out from the shoulder. 
Now, what Panama Brown is doing, he's throwing downhill, which means you're throwing down from the shoulder, which you don't really want to do unless you're super quick and talented like uh, Panama Brown, because this is going to leave that chin line open. We basically always want to have this chin covered, no matter where we, where we go, we're covered by that hand out there. Now, I'm not advocating that you punch downhill, but when you find yourself in an unusual circumstances, you want to have as many cards and tools on the table in the pocket as you can. The up fist allows you, if you just got screwed up with your, uh, 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 um, your punching downhill, or you may be punched well, and Dan parries it down with a hand, and he brings my hand down, and it's stuck in that position. With the rule set, I've got one way to go. I've got to pull this back and fire off the second shot. Or what uh, Panama Brown did, anytime he was punching downhill, we'll leave this out, and... Uh, Dan, there is a chin under here, okay? Uh, his retraction would do this. Punch downhill, up like this. Profile with it, punch downhill, up like this. So you get the idea. I'm not, Dan doesn't have a face mask on, but you get the idea of hitting the chest and then whipping up under that chin or rake of the nose or taking the top lip with it as well. There's not a lot of stink on it, but the thing is with Frontier Rough and Tumble, a lot of this early stuff, it's how much stuff you're throwing. You've got a buzzsaw going the entire highway and everything you're throwing on there whether it's the entry, the positive, the, neg uh, the negative, uh, what's going on on the inside, things are getting hacksawed and ripped and upped all the time. And that's the gorgeous, damned beauty of it. I mean, come on, it, what's not to love? Second notice about this awesome giveaway I'm conducting for the first 200 guys who respond, get to the link in the description and I will now rush you this stunning Buccaneer machete for free. Just pay shipping and handling and it's on its way to your front door. This is a $90 machete. 20 inches long, cutlery grade steel. The handle is solid steel, covered with an attractive high impact glass reinforced nylon. Total quality. And the hard shell sheath is specially designed for a fast abbreviated draw. It's out and ready in a flash. There's a strict limit of 200 to go around, so get to the link in the description now. Self-defense tip number two. Hey Joe, Ted, I and Dale Comstock here. Uh, we're at the gym and uh, getting a little workout in, so we're gonna talk a little bit about um, self-defense. And uh, you know, I, I certainly know a little bit about it, but Dale knows a lot about it. But I'm just gonna say this. Um, you know, I may not have Dale's uh, fighting skills, um, and I certainly don't. But what I do um, kind of make up in the difference is I maintain a super high level of fitness. Uh, I'm pretty damn strong. I bench 400. Um, you know, I can run uh, 10 miles easy, swim three miles. I've got a lot of endurance. So if I do get into a fight, I'm not going to gas out. I may not have all the technique, but I've got the strength and the endurance and the mindset uh, to fight. So um, if you want to take care of your family, want to take care of yourself, you know, shit hits the fan. Somebody breaks into your house you know, whatever, you're with your family route and, and somebody's getting smart, you have to, you know, you can't look like 200 pounds that you bubble gum, okay? You're gonna get your ass kicked. Uh, that's another reason why you should stay in shape. But anyway, Dale, give him, give him a, a good piece. Of yeah, I, you know, look, I think as a, just as a man, um, particularly if you're a family man, you have kids, you know, you have a, um, a moral imperative to be the best that you can be, be the best protector, not just, you know, be smart and make money, um, actually, a lot of our clients that come to us are smart, make a lot of money and just don't have any confidence um, because they've never done anything like, you know, get in a fight um, or go to the gym and work out or do some kind of sports. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, as, as men, you know, at least the kind of men that we think we are and that we, we've grown up with in the culture that we grew up in. You know, we, we're with the guys that uh, we're with the warrior mindset, you know, and, and for example, in my, my case, my son, I started him in martial arts when he was four years old and, you know, and he was all gung ho about it. And I told him when he began, I said, look, man, I said, if you want to do this, you have to finish it. Right. And I said, you know what that means? He didn't, he didn't quite understand. It. it means you have to earn your black belt. So we got him started. I started training with him and there came a point where like, he didn't want to do it anymore. I go, remember, we had a deal got to get your black belt. And he did. He had his black belt by the time he was seven and he never quit. Um, I hold two uh, six degree black belts, a first degree black belt as a professional fighter. Um, you know, I've got a lot of skill. Um, I'm, I think I'm a pretty good fighter. And uh, But what it has done for me more than anything else is give me a lot of confidence. Um, not to say that I'm fearless, but, uh, you know, I know that I can go anywhere and hold my own. And even if I get my ass kicked, at least I know it wasn't from a lack of trying or, or lack of skill sets. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. All champions lose at one point in life, right? Exactly. Um, but I think it's important. I think it's, uh, it's you know, to learn martial arts, to learn how to fight, it doesn't take years and years and years. 
Um, that's that's what everybody, the notion that's out there. <clears throat> you know, I gotta go to karate for years to get my black belt before I'm any good. I can tell you what, I can I can be, be black belt stuff. In fact, I did all the time when I was a white belt. Like, you know, it was like nothing because <clears throat> just because you have a black belt doesn't mean you really have skills. I mean, you, you just stay in the curriculum long enough to pass all the tests, go through all the motions to get your, your, uh, your belt. Um, <clears throat> You can learn how to fight effectively very fast. In fact, if you go to fightfast.com, TRS, um, they have some great videos on there to teach you how to really, almost literally overnight, start learning techniques that are practical that you can use in a street fight. Um, I have one video that's out there. It's uh, American uh, Combat Karate. It's pretty much my system is an eclectic system, but uh, um, it's designed to do just that. You know, it gives you some down and dirty stuff that works in a street fight. You know, like we talked about this earlier today about, you know, most guys can't even throw a punch. Actually, if you can just throw a one punch and a two punch accurately, you can win most fights. Most guys don't know how to throw a punch. It's just that True. simple. If you can master that little bit, that little piece, that little technique, you probably win most fights. Yep. You know, and there's there's a lot of dynamics to this, but people don't understand. But once you understand the dynamics behind it, you could be a street fighter and be a street champion like that. So, um, you know, I think athleticism, being able to fight, there's some thick skill sets that men have to have. You know, in this type time of, you know, in day and age that we're in now, you know what, man? You better know how to duke it out because yep. look at the news, man. You see guys getting carjacked. You see these riots, the street people getting pulled out of the car, getting yep. the hell beat out of them, you know? And they're just, these guys are rolling with fetal positions, just getting the shit beat, kicked out of them, you know? Um, I'm not going to let that happen to me. No. If I'm armed or unarmed, I'm not going to stand around and let my, you know, if my family's with me, risk their lives just by being incompetent, inept. And that's my fault, right? That's, right. that's my fault. I allowed, if I didn't learn how to fight by this age, I allowed that, you know, and there's no excuse for it. Just like there's no excuse for not working out and being in shape. Anyway, guys, we're gonna have more videos uh, talking about this while here at the gym. So uh, anyway, if you like what you're watching, just ring that bell at the bottom of the screen. Self-defense tip number one. The mindset that so many people have is they train with people this size and they have a fighting mode where a person grabs or whatever, he grabs you somehow. And you can make techniques. You're right. I can take Jack down. I can hurt Jack. But the problem is, even if you did this, even if you did this, your mind focus went on this man when somebody else is on you. You never in the street have the right to think that you're fighting one person. And this is what I see constantly. Or um, if a person has a knife, the mindset is he's got it in his back pocket or what. You don't see it. Your mindset has to be this person's caring. This person's assaulting you. This person is assaulting you. He is going to carry a backup. We're talking about the street. Maybe he's got some other friends with knives. So if I grab this man here, and he grabbed me here, and I came in with something here, and I'm trying to get something, you're going to be eating a knife. You're going to be eating a knife. You'll never see it, but it's there. This is the street. This is the street. Any time that it takes a second or two, and you're involving your hands, you're going to be eating a blade. You're going to be eating a blade because I've tied up both my hands. I've lost control of this person. Or I'll be eating another person's fist from the outside. And that is the mindset of what tactical survival is. Never going to the ground. Never focusing, never focusing on one person. This is the mindset that you must have. Final chance at getting a free Buccaneer machete. This is a $90 machete. It's 24 inches long, specially designed, hard shell sheath, makes it one of the fastest drawing machetes in the world. Best part, it's yours for free. Just pay shipping and handling to get this to your front door and I'll rush one out to you right away. I started with only 200. There are still some left, so get to the link in the description while you can. I'll see you over there. Let me explain how it works, Jack. Many people that train as a, in a, a fighting situation, uh, for, some, for example, Jack grabs me by the arm or whatever, you'll see doing different techniques causing pain or maybe trying a throw or, or technique to take downs or whatever, working with someone, focusing on that person. Now, so many magazines and video stuff has people my size, and I can make these techniques work. But in the real world, thank you, Jack, Bob, when you run into something bigger and stronger, this is Bob, 250 pounds, if I tried the same techniques with him, of course, he would do severe damage to you. And this is the different mindset here, is, is not using anything that is going to get me killed. Because in the real world, 
This is what you have to be able to defend yourself. And this is very important. Survival is used into two different things, understanding the legal consequences that you can use, but staying alive. Number one, as we look at a, a, a fighting situation or a survival situation, this man grabbed me here. I am not dealing with one person, never thinking that I'm dealing with one person. My mindset is that there's another person somewhere else, maybe two or three, and that he has a weapon, and that his friends out there have a weapon. If I think any differently than that, then I'm not in a street mind. I am not saying don't ever give up your martial art training or your judo training or whatever that you're doing. Keep that training because this will only enhance your ability to defend yourselves. In this program, as you watch, there will be no kicks. The reason, of course, I cannot hurt this man with a kick. I'm a very good kicker. That would not work. There would be no punches because if I punch a man this big, he's going to punch me right back. Absolutely not going to happen. You're not going to see any throws. Again, I can throw Jack, but I am not going to throw this man. I cannot throw a big man. There are not going to be any elbows. There's not going to be elbows in it. Because again, I'm fighting his strength and power. I don't want that. You will never see me fight his strength and power. Because I just don't have enough power to stop this man. There are never going to be any ground fighting. You want to stay off the ground. So many people try to take people to the ground. That will never happen. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.